Hi, welcome back to the channel. So you probably know by the title of today's video what we're going to talk about. GT7. Why do I think it needs to be redone? There's various reasons, but let's start off with this. If you're the type of person that likes video games and you base a video game solely on its graphics, then you need to switch off this video now because I will freely admit it's the best looking driving game I'm not going to use the word sim because I don't believe it is best looking driving game on anything console PC it looks amazing graphics are fantastic the cars look amazing the tracks look amazing everything just looks on point so there's no argument for me or anybody could argue with that but that's not what makes a game is it what makes a game is playability and is the playability there is the drivability right well no despite updates and we're now on update 113 or whatever we're on at the minute i don't know you can go off a curb and then you don't know what direction you're coming off that curb in because they've got something wrong not on every track but on certain tracks the cars don't feel like a like real you can just thrash them cars round and you can just get round most tracks at full belt or a lot of things at full belt when you can't do in real life you couldn't do on other sim games there's cars that are just totally op and then you buy the game you do the game and so let's talk about sales again the sales haven't been as expected uh, they're down if you look at any kind of go look at charts on google you'll see if you include digital and retail copy of the game you'll find the sales are down from where they expect to be they're certainly not in the, in the top six or seven this month in the uk anyway they're getting beat by nintendo games but maybe that was to be expected so they need to make the money some other way and that's microtransactions so everybody's talked about that today so i don't really want to get into that conversation that's up to you but if you want to collect the cars you're gonna have to grind aren't you or spend some money it's up to you grinding is now more difficult but you can still do it there's still tracks where you can earn over a million credits in and out just an hour or an hour and 10 minutes so you can do it for me the biggest thing is fanatec were the biggest um people to make money out of this if you read the forms how many dd dd pros they've sold and the kits with the steering wheel and the pedals because first time sim racers have bought this this is a lot of people that have got into this and the first experience of sim racing is going to be this so they bought the uh, DD Pro because it's all over the place and everybody recommends it. I, I've had a go with one. I certainly wouldn't. I don't think it's that great, to be fair. I think there's better, a lot better about for that kind of money, you know, for the mini size. But they have. So they've sold that and people have done that. I actually bought, so I made myself a second rig. I had the parts. I just bought a wheelbase. But I, I had the parts to do that. But then I made myself a second rig. But here comes the problem. I played the game, I did all through the menus, I did every license, and then I went to play online, because I decided to do it that way around. Online's just shocking. Because you can get a penalty, which is right, I'm not saying penalties are wrong, but you can get a penalty for putting one millimetre of tread off the track, but then someone can hit you straight up the arse at 100 mile an hour, and they get no penalty. How does that work? The The... the it's just fundamentally flawed is the, is the online aspect of the game and because of that there's very little enjoyment on it because you know you're going to get shunted if you unless you play in probably the top lobbies which i'm not good enough to play in and people say practice more well, no i'm not being funny but that's not where most people are going to play this game in the top lobbies they're not they're going to be playing with a b and c races daily races and they're, they're just awful so what do you do then you try and collect the cars there's 400 and something cars at launch but they, they brought more in and then you, you, to get them you nev well, you're never going to really do it unless you just keep grinding but then I don't know whether I'm as like everybody else but the more I grind the more bored I get at the game because it, it's become to the point now where I have no real interest in playing it anymore I'm lucky I've got a PC so I can go play proper racing games as I call them uh, I'm not getting into an argue of it being a sim because it clearly isn't it's as simple as that but I can go play AC, ACC or iRacing or something like that on my PC and have far more enjoyment. I can have proper racing online. Sure, you can still get crashes and people can still be dicks, but you get proper penalty systems that actually work. And the thing's just a far better experience. I don't pay 69 for a game and expect to have all that. 
So Sony could sort this out, couldn't they? They could easily do this. They could put a penalty system in. They could work out the physics better on the cars. Or could they? Do they understand the physics of the cars enough? I don't think they do. I think it's as simple as that. And all these bolt-on adult add-ons you buy. Come on. Half of them are junk. And then we have the system for the roulette where you can spin the roulette, you get your ticket and then you win the lowest price. It's as simple as that. They say they fixed that. No, they haven't. They clearly have not fixed it. I haven't won a car ever and I must have had 80 so far tickets. I don't know anybody else that I spoke to that's won a car. They win the lowest amount near enough every time. Or maybe the second to lowest amount. The game's just a bit ridiculous. Instead of patching whatever they're patching, which is ways to make them some more money because they've got crap sales, they need to look more at the game. So, this isn't a rant, it's just my opinion, and purely my opinion, so it's pointless putting in the comments that you're talking crap, because I can't be, because it's my opinion. I might not be right in your opinion, but it's my opinion. So, it's a little bit of a rant. The video in the background has absolutely no relation to this, apart from the fact that it is Gran Turismo 7, and it does look absolutely amazing. But... I'm a fortune into the game including buying the other and that's not what annoys me because I spend a fortune on games and I spend a fortune on equipment that's not bothering me in the slightest but I expected far more from that game than I got considering it's been in development so many years it was delayed so many times you do expect it's going to be a lot better than it actually turned out it just didn't do it for me it just hasn't got to where it should be and then I watch YouTubers who are saying it's the best game. I've actually watched YouTubers this week saying it's the best sim race that's ever been made. Come on. Come on. It just isn't. It looks amazing. And that's what you can stop at. Because it really does. So, thanks ever so much for watching. You're probably not going to agree with this video. But thanks anyway. And I'll have another video coming up soon. on a new